to my channel my name is Lizzie hope you're doing well this is talks with Lizzie it's a vlog this time not so much a tarot reading it's too much glare <laughs> that's with the window open sun brow it's early <laughs> um, I just got home from work I'm not taking my hair out this is how I wear my hair mostly at work sometimes I do a ponytail but it's like I worked in a fact I work in a factory so that's dusty as shit. I just don't want my hair in my way. So um this is pop culture packs a punch and we're gonna get right into it because as you can tell <laughs> I have I've done this a few times. I like sorted a bunch of names and before I did cards. Um and so I just wanted to stick I was like, I need to cut this because there's way too much pop culture stuff I could talk about. And I want to keep this under 30 minutes or less. So I'm just going to go name, name by name. I did the top 100 most influential people. And then I added um, a couple of their famous people that are with them that are, you know, current. And then I have some stuff that's not so current if I have time to go through the cards um, that I feel like is important in our generation to talk about but let's get into it. So I have three categories here. I have witchy and spiritually gifted. Um, I'll kind of explain a little bit about spiritually gifted. Sirens are people like who uh, use their voice body um, to get what they want in life good or bad. Um, then witchy is like spiritual gifts of some kind of the occult and light worker is somebody with a um, mission to do something good um, for God or humanity and then I'll just say like good person <laughs> um, if I'm not really sure all right so like what where they fit let's get into this of course this one isn't exactly current, but every I wanted to say names everybody would know. Everybody knows who Stevie Nicks is. If you don't, she's the lead singer of Fleetwood Mac. Um, I always thought, like, even before, because I laughed when I saw her in American Horror Story as a witch because I always felt like she had witchy vibes. So I feel like she's definitely, like, an earth angel or witchy in the occult. Um, I think Rihanna is a bit witchy. I think all the Kardashians um, are witchy. <laughs> Not bitchy. I said witchy. <laughs> like spiritually gifted. Uh, good and bad. Like there's pros and cons to the Kardashians. And I feel like we could do a whole category just on them. Like literally people teach college classes about these guys and, and love or hate them you gotta hold it down they are the longest standing reality tv show pretty much right up there with the osbournes the osbournes were like the first uh version of the kardashians my generation knows about the osbournes i believe you can get it on hulu that's like sharon osborne and ozzy osborne and their two kids um I loved that show that I watched all of it. Um, shout out to them. Like I said, there's good and bad parts of those families. Like, there's definitely toxic stuff. You see, you know, especially when you watch them from the beginning and you watch them to now, you kind of really see what fame does to people through them. So it's like an eye open, eye opening experience. I don't think any of the Kardashians are like evil people. I don't think that they are s spreading more bad or more good. I feel like there's like equal parts of the Kardashians that are good and bad. Like you can say what you want about them. They they are loyal to each other. They are like one of the most loyal families out here, you know. There's been a lot of shit that went down and they never turned on each other and I think you can say the same for the Osbournes, like, as, as much shit as you talk, there's a lot of families out here that I know that can't be that loyal, so, 
that's one positive I will say. I really respect and appreciate their love and relationships. It reminds me a lot of my siblings. I have five other siblings, and I could just relate to that in, in general. Like, I think anybody who has multiple siblings can relate who are close. Like, I'm not as close to, to, to my siblings. Like, I don't talk to them every day like they do, but we are very, very close. We all get along. We can all hang out. Um... And that, I think that's rare, as close as the Kardashians are. Like, for them to spend that much time and, like, live right across the street from each other. Like, that's awesome. But I do feel like, uh, you know, there's parts of Kylie that I think she get sucked into the mean girl crowd. And if she would just, like, step away from certain people, I think <laughs> she could... Um, her good parts of her take over, but I don't like want to harsh on the negative. She's very young. I try to consider all these people in their ages, and you know, I just feel like in their age group, like catty bitches sometimes is kind of part of the age group. So I can't harp on her just because she's in front of the world. But she is the first woman billionaire technically, but that is not true. Um, there was other <laughs> women billionaires, but they got their money taken back because they had to go to prison. So, I mean, double-edged sword. Um, let's get into it. Haley Bieber, I think she's witchy, but, you know, I'm not a fan of Haley Bieber, but I don't think she's, like, a nasty person. I think she is more, um... I don't want to label her mean girl, but I think that she definitely does shit in this world. And when she's called on it, she won't own up to it. I definitely um, don't like the bully side of her. Um, I don't know these people, but, you know, I've learned to read between the lines. And I just wouldn't trust her um, as a person. I think she's a bit backstabby. Um... I think she'll like you to your face, but not behind your back. I don't think that she's real or, uh, well, I think she's real because there's parts of her, like, she's a social media influencer pretty much, and she does a lot of good. I'm not, like, trying to trash the girl. She's young, so she could grow up and outgrow this, like, Chrissy Teigen's another like, she, Chrissy Teigen used to be like Hailey Bieber. Chrissy Teigen is now grown and more chill and owned her shit. Like, yeah, I was a mean girl back in the day. I feel like Hailey Bieber will be in that spot one day. So I'm not, like, talking shit on Hailey Bieber. I think she does good. I think a lot of girls look up to her in her age group. But us older girls, it's hard for us to respect someone like Hailey Bieber because she is the epitome of sly catty like we can as a society it's not that we respect mean girls but it's like mean girls who own it I feel like get more respect than mean girls that are ha 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 and then don't own it it's like you just make yourself look bad. I, I 100%, not just, like, everybody gets hung up on Selena Gomez and her drama, but she's done this to mad people just in my research. Like, if she don't like you, she'll hint that she don't like you, and I just don't like that kind of person. So, I would be leery of her. But, you know, she's got good advice for your generation. If you're in your generation, just take her with a grain of salt. Because, you know, with her, she could go left or she could go right. And she's so young that it's kind of like, I don't, like, I wouldn't count her out. I wouldn't be like, ew, Haley Bieber, eh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I would say hi to her. I have enough respect her, for her, but I just wouldn't give her any information about myself or let her in my friends group. I just think that she's a little bit, she's the toxic friend. I think she likes drama. I think she likes to stir the pot and she does a lot of this <laughs> okay anyway jenna or ortega uh she plays wednesday she's a great 
freaking actress. She's done a bunch of stuff on Disney. I watched her when I was babysitting a bunch of kids. Um, I think she's an amazing... I think she's going to be, like, around for a very long time in a lot of shit. Like, early, like... I don't know. Demi Moore. Early Meg Ryan. Like, they were in a lot of shit for a long stretch. And then they kind of dip a little bit when they get older. So I just feel like this is the like just the beginning of her prime she's such a good actress i really think she's great for you know this age group <laughs> i think they rep they resonate with her but i watch the show wednesday too and i resonate with her too like she just has that gift as an actress she can be ageless and that's very rare um so look after her like i'm sure you're going to be seeing her in her a lot of shit and i think she definitely has witchy vibes <laughs> uh dua lapia i think she's a siren um as well as miley cyrus um i don't really have anything bad to say about dua lapia i think she's a saucy sexy little thing and she's young and if i was her age i'd be shaking it like she does too so <laughs> you know like um I like her. I think she, you know, apart from being a siren, she might be a little witchy. Um, Miley Cyrus has definitely got, in a weird way, like holistic vibes. And, you know, I used to not like Miley Cyrus, but not like, I didn't trash her, but I just didn't get her. But now that I'm older and I'm, I'm kind of gotten used to Miley, <laughs> um, what I originally thought was her, like, snapping under the pressure and, like, maybe listening to bad advice, I feel like was just her in this box of, like, because she grew up very, very young. She started with Disney, you know, she was Hannah Montana. Like, from a very young age, people told her how to be and how to act. And, you know, maybe I fell into it, too, and that's why I, I didn't get, like, when she came out with the, the, the bear thing and did the tongue thing, I was like, what the fuck happened to Miley Cyrus? And I feel like everybody did. But now that I'm spiritually inclined, to me, I just see a big, fat, m middle fucking finger to you can't control me. And she was the epitome of you can't be tamed. Like, she lived the song, like... I'm going to, like, this is a fucking cir circus, and I'm going to show you that you can be fucking ridiculous. Like, I'll do what the fuck I want, and I respect her for that. Um, she tests the limits. She pushes the line with sexuality. And, you know, with my generation, I was kind of in that funny place. I think this happened to a lot of my generation. It's like we wanted to be free like this young generation, but we were raised by women that told us we had to like. So, so we're like, what do we do? I don't know. Well, you know, to the world. And Miley Cyrus pushed our comfort zones. It, it pushed us to see that this young generation the way they throw their bodies out, the way they write their music, it's not that they are doing it to be disgusting or distasteful like I originally felt at first. It's the big middle finger to the chauvinistics that women can like sex, women can show their bodies, and they can enjoy making a profit off of it. Not so that men can benefit, but so that women can benefit. And I respect that, so... I feel like a lot of people um, kind of look at Miley Cyrus crooked. She's probably an alien like me because I always get those looks too. Nobody gets me either. <laughs> um, Kate Hudson and Goldie Hawn, definitely witchy vibes, definitely light workers. I fucking love Goldie Hawn. She, taught, she was like my generation's Miley Cyrus, like the complete fucking rebel <laughs> i grew up watching her but like come on love sex what you know goldie Hawn was like raunchy for our day so and i feel like kate hudson is a mix of that but she's got more comedy in her uh either way they're both meant to be where they are they're fantastic actresses reese witherspoon and nicole kidman everybody knows them i just feel like they're um 
especially Reese. She's like definitely a light worker, these two. Reese is changing the game for authors. She's starting to put, like, I'm not saying she started the movement. Of course, you have Harry Potter and all that. But Reese Witherspoon reads books and she gets them and turns them into um, movies. She's done a lot for women directing. She's not the only one <laughs> that does that, but I just feel like she is not the first, but her, she's paving the way for the younger crowd. A lot of people look up to her. Same with Sandra Bullock, Nicole Kidman as well. A lot They take actresses under their wings. I feel like they're good people. Um, Nicki Minaj, I feel like she is a star seed. People look at her sideways. She's very rough and abrasive like me. Like she can either come off as a straight bitch or she can come off sweet. It really just depends how you come at her. But I just feel like she's a straight up good person. I don't feel any. And I know a lot of people are like, that bitch is evil. I don't really feel that. I just feel like she's guarded and probably has a good reason. Um, Camilla Cabello. Cabello never say your name right. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think she's witchy. Um, definitely uh, has that Cajun, Cajun magic in there. Cardi B, another. Um, I know Nicki Minaj and Cardi B are very different. They hate being compared, but they're both star seeds, and that's why they're compared. They're out of this world. There's no one like them. They have their own language. They have their own vibe. You can't mistake them. They're doing exactly what they're meant to do, and they're leading the path, teaching other people to be different. Don't worry, these are not all men, all women. Um, we have Princess Kate, Prince William, Pippa Middleton, Queen Camilla, Camilla and King Charles, Princess Eugenie and Beatrice, Princess Anne, just Duchess Sophia, and what's her husband? Is it Edward? I'm sorry, I'm so bad with the royal names, but um, these are the training people. Then, of course, you have Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Um, so let's go through this briefly. I feel like Prin Duchess Kate, I'm sorry, Princess Kate and Prince William are light workers. Um, Pippa Middleton, I don't really feel like she is has any like maybe witchy. I don't know. I just think she's a good person, a good sister. Um, Queen Camilla and Queen Char or King Charles, I feel like are definitely twin flames. Same with Princess and Kate and Prince William. Um, Princess Eugenie and Beatrice, good people. I don't feel bad about them. I don't like their father. I'm sorry. I'm not going to give him any time and space. Uh, he got a pass. I got a problem with that because the person who hurt me also got a pass. And that's fucking disgusting. And I have no respect for that. Um, sorry. <laughs> I don't, I'm not putting that on Eugenie or Beatrice. But Andrew made the list too. And I just don't, I just don't want to talk about him further. But that does not reflect on his nice daughters out here doing good stuff. Princess Anne, I fucking love her. And, of course, we all <laughs> grew a lot of respect for the feather. Uh, we love her sass. Um, whether she planned that or not, I don't care. She gets a gold star. But she's awesome. She's always been a boss bitch. I always like her. She tells it like it is. If she don't fucking like you, she, you know it. She ain't shady. She don't play no fucking games. And she don't take no one shit. So, I respect Princess Anne. When you walk in a room, your back goes up. Don't give her no fucking shit. She ain't, she will peg your ass to the wall if you push her. You can also say that about me. So, how the fuck can I hate someone like that? <laughs> I'm like, hey, I get that too. I feel ya. I feel you. Um, I love Sophie. I think she does amazing work. Same with Kate. I think they come up with great ideas. I think they touch people. You know, people relate to them. Same with Camilla. She's had a lot of shit thrown at her. She's a tough broad. She's been through a lot of stuff. She does a lot with battered women. Go her for that. I appreciate that. I don't really have anything to say negative about King Charles. I think he, you know, had a shitty, shitty beginning of his first marriage. But <laughs> everybody makes a mistake at those ages. So, can't judge. He made up for it. Um... I'm not going to give the other two any attention. They're disgusting. They're dark workers. They're dividers. Um, 
they're evil. Point blank period. People need to start pushing them out. And stop. Just stop talking about them. They, it just gives them more power. Jared Leto, I think he is a star seed. He's a triple threat. That guy can do anything. He can act, sing. He's but like he's amazing at both. Like I don't know if you've seen the range of Jared Leto's acting. Like I watched him when he started. Like my so called life. I I had the biggest crash on Jared Leto. <laughs> like, I'm grown up, I'm not but I just remember like that was the first man I was like <gasps> about. So he's always special to me because like you always remember I mean, I wouldn't say it was my first crush, because it's not real. Like, you know the difference between real and, like, celebrity people. But I remember him being, like, the first, like, celebrity person. I was like, oh. <laughs> about. Um, but his range of acting is just sick. I just think he's an awesome person. Super talented, low-key. Tom ha Holland, uh, the new Spider-Man, I think he's a great guy. I don't really feel like he has much of any gifts other than he's um, supposed to be doing what he's doing. He's an amazing dancer. Not many men um, show proudly ballet moves. So shout out to Tom for that. I love that. Justin Timberlake, I feel like he's a light worker. He's been around a long time. He, I, another triple threat. Um, Zoe Saldana, I definitely feel like she's witchy. She's super spicy. Love her. Um, I love Zoe since Center Stage. I was a dancer, so Zoe was like my favorite in that movie. Um, J Lo got a hold of Dom for J Lo, a fellow New Yorker. Hi, J Lo out there <laughs> in the world. <laughs> I all shout out to all my <laughs> New York homies out here. Um, sorry, Cardi B and Nikki. I don't actually know if Nikki's from New York, but I feel like she has New York vibes, so I just. I just claimed her. If she's not, I don't give a shit. You're in New York now, Nikki. <laughs> um, I, I think, yeah, Cardi B definitely is. I can tell by the accent. Um, Haley Bieber, her dad is from up here, I believe. Baldwin's. Their mom lives close to us. Like, I don't know them, but I know his mom lives close to us. Um, J-Lo just, she's another triple threat. Harry Styles, I feel like he's a star seed. Another triple threat. Eminem, hands down star seed. Trendsetter, like, he... I, don't, I can't think of anyone in the rap game ever in the history of everdom that sat in a room and has everybody singing your lyrics. I was just like, what the fuck is going on here? Because I come up, like, it was probably a lot like Eminem. He's a little bit ahead of me, but, like, there was, like, the grunge, the rap people, you know, the pop. You know, we didn't even fucking mix. So just to see that, to come from that, and to see that, I was like, whoa. Star seed. <laughs> um, Adele, another crazy siren. Her voice is unlike anybody's. Billie Eilish. Um, <sighs> like Hailey Bieber, I don't trust her. Lizzo, I fucking love her. Real bitch. Hands down. Definitely witchy vibes. Megan the Stallion, I feel like she's a siren. I like her. Um... She's a bit more raunchy than my style, but I gotta hold it down first. She's changing the game for women, and she's got a lot of good beats out there. Although some of those probably shouldn't be sung by little girls. <laughs> um, the weekends, uh, I feel like they're star seeds just because they have unique looks. Their sound changes so much. Drake as well. Um, Beyonce, I feel like she's definitely. A witch, witchy vibes. Queen for sure. Um, hey, stop doing that. Goddess energy for Beyonce. Um, and Beyonce is another one. Like Eminem, like Beyonce transcends 
transcends all markets. So does Adele, really. Everybody listens to Adele. Same with J-Lo. Like, there's specific stars that you know are star seed where you can look in a room. Like, everybody watches what they're wearing. Everybody watches what they're doing. Beyonce is one of those people. Um... <sighs> Where do I want to get from? Ed Sharon was on here as well. Um, I think he's an amazing writer. I definitely feel like he's a light worker. Witchy vibes. Definitely a siren for sure. Um, I'm on the fence with Ed Sheeran. Um, <laughs> I just feel like he showed his hand. Although he didn't sing the song. He wrote it about being able to fool the town, basically run circles around all of you. You might be able to fool everyone, Sharon, but red flag. See, although I don't feel like he's fake, I don't feel like he's a phony, he's always thinking of profits and doing, in my opinion, who... <laughs> Profit comes first. Even though he's being real, I just don't feel like parts of his documentary were. Parts of his relationships, I feel. But that's my opinion. I'm not going to get into it. I take him with a grain of salt because I think he's a brilliant writer. Whatever I think about, and it's not so much. I don't feel like he's a fake. I don't feel like he's a phony, but I don't feel like when he says he does things because he likes it and not, I just feel like he is 25. He's a mastermind is what I'm getting at. He's 25 steps ahead. Like he works with people he knows are going to be hits. He help market his life. Like I just feel like Although it's authentic, he'll come in, make a quick million, and dip again. And that's his prerogative. I'm not saying anything negative about that. But be authentic about it. Okay. <laughs> My kid did not like that. She's like, don't talk about Sharon. <laughs> she ate his card, too. Maybe she is a fan. But, like, I don't think this is coming across correct. Like, I don't think he's faking it. Like, his friend's death. I don't think he's faking his cancer, his, his wife's cancer. I don't think that's fake. I think his relationship is a, within that di dynamic is not what it's portrayed. And I feel like some of those things in his song is not what he is saying. But that's just like a psychic thing. So I can't be like, there's more to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just feel like they tell you so much. They show you, but then here's the truth. They're very good at... He's a little too squeaky clean for me. It's just off. <laughs> um, Usher... Bruno Mars, great dancers, um, trendsetters for men um, in this new age. Like, Justin Timberlake was my generation of dancers. This Tom Holland is this generation actor, but he's in the ballet scene. Um, even Ed Sheeran did, uh, I think even Niall Horan did a ballet thing. They started slowly creeping in ballet. I don't know. I'm just nodding to that generation for bringing men into dance more so than anybody else. Like, if you look at Usher in my generation and Bruno Mars, I feel like Usher passed the torch to Bruno, even though they're very different styles and they have very good music. It's like everybody has a male dancer, and I feel... In their generation, mine was Usher, but I feel like this generation's is Bruno Mars. 
Um, Lady Gaga, definitely a witch. <laughs> Doja Cat, uh, also a New Yorker. Shout out to Lady Gaga. I feel like she was one of the first women to really push the fashion industry, like her or don't. Um, it was crazy and fun to watch, and it changed the game. Doja Cat's definitely a witch. Pink, I fucking love her. She's like one of my favorite humans. She's definitely an earth angel. Um, Little Nas X, I feel like he is a starseed. Tyler Swift, definitely a siren or like a light worker. Good positive person. I, I feel like, like Ed Sheeran, she's like that too. It's like they're very calculated. They're very squeaky clean. They have their image and then they have their real person. So I always feel like they're a little bit fake because they have the persona and then they have them and I don't feel like they honestly mix. Again, they're prior, prior, oh my God, I can't even speak. <laughs> it's like the, the world won't let you talk shit about <laughs> cheering and telling yourself, but it's like, it's not talking shit. I understand it. You got to keep your personal life separate, but they're two very big people that promote honesty and authenticity and they do a lot of stuff in their life for profit for that to be true is all I'm saying um Selena Gomez I'm on the fence with her as well she's been through a lot of shit she's got a lot of good stuff but you know she's got mental illness like me not using that as an excuse I just feel like we're seeing a whole new like you saw Selena then and you see Selena now and now we're starting to get Selena's real character like she's being honest she's adult she's growing into her skin so like Haley, i'm reserving judgment <laughs> they're very young um all this catty business i don't feel like is necessarily selena's fault but she does add into it and stir the pot and i feel like they all kind of play off each other to keep it going um katie perry is another one i'm on the fence about but she's definitely a star seed I feel very fake vibes from her. I'm sorry. No offense. Sam Smith, I love him. I think he's totally chill. Olivia Rodrigo, amazing talent, amazing writer. Very depressing, though. Um, they overplayed her music in a very dark time, and because of it, um, I'm a little resentful because I saw... The depression in people and how it added and that song just kept playing and playing and playing and the world the radio station kept playing it and playing it and playing it but during that time a lot of people were suffering and you know I just think songs like that helped add to the suicide rate and not that anybody shouldn't write sad songs it's not her fault it's an amazing song I more blame the radio for overplaying it, for being insensitive, um, because that's not Olivia's fault. She wrote a genius song, and she didn't ask the world to play it 9,000 times a day, back to back to back to back. It's like literally disgusting how much the radio stations still to this day play that song, and they did a fucking study on it, and it literally is shown to clinically depress people. Her song is known to clinically depress people. <laughs> and the radio plays it more than any other song. So for that, I just, I kind of wish she would dip for a minute because she writes a lot of depressing stuff. And I wish she would use her gift for a happier vibe and be a little bit more responsible for. Like, I just wish that musicians realized how much their songs are played over and over and over and over and over and over and what you're subconsciously telling people over and over and over and over no don't write your whole fucking record based on what we're gonna hear over and over again but if you're writing some really suicidal dark ass shit like this other artist out here i'm gonna kill my ex like my radio station out here plays that 52 times a day and we have a gun violence problem so much that we've been at a state of emergency for almost a year so let's not play a song about shooting my fucking ex 27 times a day. You know? But you can't blame the artist. You gotta blame the radio stations. And being insensitive for 
what they cause. <laughs> Does music cause stuff all the time? No, but it adds to it. What is the first thing a depressed person does when they're alone? If you took a poll, it would say, listen to music. <laughs> so, <laughs> just saying. I just think that um, some people in this world who have gifts feed off negativity um, and it feeds their source. And I feel like she's one of those. Drew Barrymore, um, she's had a very checkered past. She's come through it. I really like her. Um, is she authentic? Mm, probably now. Her whole life, no. But, you know, nobody's perfect. Jason Momoa, I think that's his name. Aquaman. I definitely feel like he's got witchy vibes. Definitely a siren. Same with Salma Hayek, definitely witchy. J.K. Rowling, definitely witchy. Post Malone, Star Seed. Jamie Foxx, Star Seed. Matthew McConaughey, Light Worker. Jake. Yeah, Jake Ben Phoenix. <laughs> Joaquin. Stop saying it wrong. And now I fuck up his name because I kept teasing my friend, and now I'm like, which way is it? Fuck my life! Joaquin Phoenix. Sorry, Joaquin. That's my bad. I shouldn't tease people now. I, and now I fuck it up. Sia, I definitely think that she's genius to hide her face like that. Same with the marshmallow guy. But I think that they have a lot more to hide in, so I don't trust them. Scarlett Johansson. She's another one that I'm... She's got a real bitch side that I feel like she hides. Like, she either likes it or she don't. So I respect people like that. But at the same time, she's kind of up there with Haley Bieber. I kind of feel like she would blow you in. But I could also see her being, like, cutthroat. Like, don't fuck with my friend. I don't really know her. So I'm just like, I don't know. You're hard to read, Scarlet. So I'm on the fence with you. <laughs> oh, and John, definitely a star seed. Um, big movement for gay men, especially in his time. Um, Gal Gadot, that's the Wonder Woman. I think she's definitely a witch. Gwen Paltrow, definitely a witch with her healing. But she definitely uh, raised a lot of awareness about vagina health. So shout out to her for that. Madonna, I grew up listening to her. I don't trust her. I I think her fashion was great. I think her music was great. <sighs> I feel like she a bit falls into the category of Tom Cruise where she's a cultist. And I just can't respect people who fall into cults and preach cult-like shit. Uh, Megan Fox, definitely a siren. I... And th this isn't as, like her as a woman or like anything to do with her sexual preferences or anything like that. I just feel like she's sketchy. Don't trust her. Um, Amal, George Clooney's wife. I think she's awesome. I think she does amazing stuff. She's definitely a light worker. Um, Russell Brand. Uh, I didn't really like him, but if you check out his YouTube channel, he says a lot of really smart shit. So I feel like he's a star seed. Um, I feel like all the Spice Girls <laughs> were definitely, I added some older ones here, but definitely feel like they're all witches. Uh, Christina Aguilera, Siren. Kelly Clarkson, Earth Angel. Carrie Underwood, Earth Angel. Shakira, Siren. Gretchen Wilson, love her, Starseed. Shania Twain, I love her, she's just a good person. Um, Sarah McLachlan, I feel like she was definitely a witch <laughs> uh melissa mccarthy and jenny mccarthy definitely witchy vibes in a good way same with rebel wilson lord and rebecca remain zach efron i feel like he's a siren the olsen twins like mary kate and ashley olsen are definitely witchy vibes sophie turner i love her i think she's cool definitely witchy vibes um Priyank, oh my god i'm so sorry i can't ever say her name Priyanka Chopra. <laughs> Sorry, girl. I feel like she's definitely a witch. I like her. I don't really know much about her, but I like that. I like that she's, like, low-key, but not at the same time. Like, she's open, but you don't know much about her. Um, 
Emma Watson, love her. Uh, definitely feel like she's got witchy vibes. Emma Stone, too, love her. Emily Blunt. Chris Rock, I definitely feel like he's a good person. I just wanted to shout out to him, not because of what he went through, but I he's my generation pretty much. And I, I love that he's still holding it down. Same with Adam Sandler. Um, Christina Milian, Mia, Brandy, and Monica back in the day. I feel like they were definitely witchies. <laughs> uh, Queen Latifah, Little Kim, Mary J. Blige, Fergie, Salt and Pepper, TLC, Selena, and Aaliyah. I feel like those, rest in peace, definitely were witches, though. Jennifer Hudson, definitely a siren. Um, quick shout out to rest in peace lisa marie presley i definitely feel like she was a witch uh, barbara walters amazing light worker she did amazing things for journalism and women shout out to her um the late great tina turner that just passed definitely um an earth angel healer and i didn't even know that jerry springer passed away i was like doing my research i was like what jerry springer died oh my god and he was the dramas but I don't feel like he was a bad dude. A little bit of a pervert. Probably had a sketchy past. Might even have a, a discretion or two. But <laughs> he made us all laugh. And I don't like to speak ill of the dead. So let's move on. Um, let's talk about light workers. These aren't people that like with any gifts. I just feel like they're doing a lot for humanity. I'm just going to shout out their names. Tom Hanks, Alyssa Milano, Roseanne Barr. She's gotten a lot of shit, but I love her as a comedian. People don't realize what she did for women. Same with Rosie O'Donnell and Lisa Lampanelli, Tina Turner, or I'm um, Tina Turner, <laughs> Tina Fey. Um, like all these women in comedy amazing women then you have jim carrey adam sandler again denzel washington shia labeouf brad pitt bono melissa etheridge jewel fiona apple who i'm sorry i thought fiona apple died and i feel like a dick but it's not my fault it's the internet i'm sorry out there fiona apple i'm so glad you're alive i cried over you <laughs> i thought you were dead i was like what fiona apple died no she just went off for a little bit God damn it, internet. My bad, Fiona. She's not dead. <laughs> She's an amazing singer. So I put that on there because I felt like an asshat for crying all these years about you and your life. That just means you were good. <laughs> you know? Uh, Christina Applegate, she's going through a lot, but hands down, funny ass lady. I watched her when I was a kid. Married with children all the way up. Man, she's been in a lot of shit. And I'm sorry that she's got it rough. And I just wanted to send her a lab out there. Cindy Crawford, Tyra Banks. There's a bunch of models out there. I can't say you all, but those two, like, leading women in the industry. Sharon Osbourne, she got in trouble for her mouth, but I fucking love her. Sharon says it how it is, and we need more like her. Shout out to you, Sharon. Love you. Uh, Louis Capaldi and Niall Horan. I love your fucking friendship. You guys are cute. You guys make me giggle. Jonas Brothers. I love that you guys make money together. Um, I grew up with Hanson. Shout out to you as well, Hanson. You guys are like, we're my little sister's generation of Hanson. And I love that, that you wrote your own music. You played your own instruments. You started as kids. I was like, yeah. So I was so happy to see you because, again, you know, I'm a little bit ahead of you. And I grew up with Hanson. And I just loved that, you know, you weren't the typical boy band. So, yay. Um, George Clooney. I said his wife. I forgot to say him. Shout out to you, George Clooney. Tom Hardy has... You know, he made my list because he says a lot of spiritual shit. He surprised me. I feel like he's a star seed. Shout out to Tom Hardy. You were wise. I don't know if you're actually saying these quotes that everybody's putting your face on, but it's making you look good. <laughs> um, Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood. I fucking love them. They're great people. They do a lot of good stuff. Michael Jordan and Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> uh... Shaquille O'Neal, Joseph Gordon Lovett, I fucking love him, he does so much for young writers, people coming up, he's very creative, Nicholas Sparks, Mia Hamm, Stephen King, Derek Jeter, Tom Brady, Dolly Parton, um, Faith Hill and Tim McGraw, love them, Leanne Rimes, grew up with her, shouting out to her, um, 
David Spade, Rob Schneider, Will Farrell, Colin Farrell, Jake Gyllenhaal, and his sister Maggie Gyllenhaal, Mark and Donnie Wahlberg, Chris Pine, and Kevin Costner. <sighs> All right. Let's get into that. Uh-oh. Bad people alert other than the Harkles, which I don't want to give them attention. Um, I'm going to say good and bad people here. Um, Rob Kardashian. This is my broken souls or lost souls. Rob Kardashian is a very good person. I'm not at all bashing him, but I feel like he has a very broken soul. And um, I wish him healing in life. Um, who knows? Maybe he is. He just dipped off. Maybe he's doing good. We're all hoping. Tanya Harding. <sighs> I feel like she's done a lot of fucked up shit. She might still do fucked up shit, but she's improving. I don't feel like she's an evil jerk, but I think she's going to have a problem on Judgment Day about some stuff. <laughs> um, Will and Jada Smith... I think Jada, I don't want to bash women because I do think she is a strong woman. I think she's been through a lot, but I think that she has a very deranged perception of what a wife is and, it's very, and a mother, um, and it's very toxic. What she speaks, um isn't always healthy. Um, I'm not talking about like when you have an affair, if you're still putting that affair's blame on somebody else, there's something wrong with you. I'm just going to leave it there. I just think that she's a very negative person and she negatively affected Will and Will is a negative person person who is mentally ill um and I feel like Jada is too they're just very mentally unstable and I feel like their kids are cool eccentric unique they have a percept a perception of life that none of us have but they ha they have that same toxicity in them but you know it's tough um but I don't feel I don't want to be like they're fucking horrible people for any of these people other than, you know, a few on here that deserve it. <laughs> um, like, I feel like Meghan Markle is a very dark, disgusting version of Jada Pinkett Smith. Like, there's a little level of that Jada won't cross, and then there's... Megan will just cross anything. So th they're kind of equal playing field and Harry and Will are equal playing field. I just feel like you should keep a clear distance. Same with Hillary and Bill Clinton. Um, I do feel like Bill was a good president despite all of his shit, but he did put a level of toxicity um, on relationships. And Hillary, you know... <sighs> it's Memorial Day, so I'll never forget the seals and her part participation of it. Amber Heard is disgusting. We, do we even need to go there? She's a dark person, and <laughs> she's not going to get better. Um, Tom Cruise, I think he's an amazing talent as an actor. Um, he got sucked into a cult and he's brainwashed so I just can't have any respect for him as a person because this is why I don't totally hate Tom Cruise because in Scientology Tom Cruise is somebody they need he's somebody that they go and have speak so he doesn't see the real grimy shit they're never going to put Tom Cruise in any scandalous shit because they cannot smear his name he is the golden boy of Scientology. So, he Tom Cruise never sees what anybody's accusing. He never sees the horrible shit. So, he has 
gone on believing that his church is being an attack being attacked and he believes what they say and they spoon fed him and they you know just like these fake ass towns that they build and that nobody really lives there he's a cocoon of that religion and i'm sad for his soul prince andrew fucking disgusting chrissy Teigen, i feel like she's a reformed mean girl i think she's trying she's been through a lot but there's still a part of her that <laughs> likes an attention or will dip back into her own ways, but I dip back into my own ways, so I'm not harping on her. She's just got to, I feel like she's got to check herself, and she does. Um, she's a mom now, and she's she's classing it up. Not that she will ever be super classy. That's what we love about her. She's raunchy and real. Um, but, you know, I just feel like she's one of them people. If she don't like you, she don't fucking like you. She ain't going to fuck with you. And I both respect that, and I'm like, at the same time. Ellen DeGeneres, I feel like she is a bully. Uh, she was not just for the accusations. Like, I watched her show, too. I watched the interview. She's pushy. She, she crossed lines, and she knew it, and she did it on purpose. She's vindictive. But she did a lot for women. She did a lot for gay women. She came up in a time where people were nasty to gay women. So for that, I will always respect her. But I hold her at arm's distance. Jennifer Lawrence, I love, but also think she's toxic. Like, there's parts of her that are really great and amazing and she's hilarious. But that girl is a hot fucking mess. <laughs> the same with Britney Spears. There's great things about her. Uh, she's been through a lot. We've learned a lot about her, which I think helped us understand a lot. And I, I'm glad that she's speaking out. But, you know, I just feel like Rob Kardashian with Jennifer Lawrence and, you know, I just, and Britney Spears, I wish them peace. I feel like Jennifer Aniston is a very sweet soul. I don't feel like she's very broken, but I feel like I see the eating disorder in me and her. I feel like she's never, she has an amazing body but it's never quite good enough for her i don't know i just see her eating herself about her looks and her appearance and that's never been something that died for her and i just feel sad um zendaya i feel like the the opposite like she's very she grew up i feel like a lot of girls like her that were tall and lengthy they got teased and because of it you have all these like self-conscious issues not that i feel like she's broken i just feel sad for her that she has to carry that around same with jennifer aniston you're beautiful fucking women <laughs> it just makes me sad that you don't see that about yourself sean mendez i feel like he um he's struggling a lot with with things and he's being vocal and i i applaud that and i wish him healing um johnny depp same thing. He's been through a lot. You can see it on his face. I just wish him healing. Um, Conor McGregor and D. Uh, Devlin, they've had a lot of controversy. They've had a lot of things go down during the pandemic that I lost respect for them for. Um, but I don't feel like they're bad people. I feel like they, they're they're coming around. They're trying to make up for it um, with this documentary. I just, they're like an, another one, like Ed Sheeran and Cherry. I just feel like their relationship isn't what they portray it to be. But if you're in the public eye and you're putting your relationship out there, you know, you're going to paint it in a way better light than it is. So I can't really harp on Ed Sheeran and Cherry. I, I can't really harp on, <laughs> you know, because you're not going to show the truth. You're not going to show the hard bits, you know. But I would be, I'm rooting for Connor and Dee. They've been together for a long time. But I just, <laughs> I really liked Dee. But I don't know why. But just in my area, I can't speak for everyone. The documentary came out and it kind of like, I saw a different side to her, and so I just, I don't know if it's because she was just quiet, and her, like, maybe she has a resting bitch face, I don't know, I have that sometimes, I don't know, I just, I'm on the fence with Dee, and Connor, I feel like the money, and fame, and all that got to him, and 
let's be honest, it would get to all of us. So that's not a judgment. And I do see him turning it around. Like now he's getting older, he's got kids. And again, I'm not talking shit about D. I just feel like she's not a good supporter. Don't kill me, but like mother of the year, yes. Like, is she a good partner for Connor? Yes. But she's passive and quiet. But you don't know. Like, we're only seeing a video. We're only seeing, I'm just seeing, talking about what people are saying. Like, she's very frosty. But maybe Connor likes that. I don't know. Maybe that's what Connor needs in that moment. She knows him. But I just... My spidey senses went up and was like, uh oh. <laughs> I don't know if you should trust that one. And that's how it's been with Connor the last couple of years. I was a diehard Connor fan. I still am. I'll always root for him when he's fighting. I'll always want him to win. I don't really watch fighting anymore. But he's not the same Connor. And that's okay because you don't ever come out the same. But the parts I liked about Connor aren't really there anymore anymore um they're coming back a little bit there's always hope for him um chris brown i think he is not to be trusted i think uh as far as women <laughs> i think once a, a beater always a beater but that's my own personal experience i'm not gonna put that on chris brown i do feel like he's done his time there hasn't been anything really that popped up about him hurting anybody else so he could be reformed i just don't feel like it's possible um if a man can look at you and fuck up your face like that they'll fuck up your face like that whenever they want to it's just in, until they want to in my opinion uh, there's no coming back same with floyd Mayweather, he was a woman beater. He'll always be a woman beater. You come out, if you, if I see a woman's face like I saw with Rihanna, like I saw with Floyd's fucking shit, I will never respect you. I will never fucking respect you because there's been a several times that I almost died by a man's hands and there's no excuse for it. None whatsoever. Um... Bella Thorne, she's got a lot on her plate about being a bitch and being hard to deal with. Other than that, I don't really have an opinion on her. Um, Army Hammer, disgusting. Wendy Williams, very toxic, very vain. But, you know, she did a lot for her industry. Vin Diesel, same thing. It's like in his past, he had a lot of like bitchy shit happen about his work. He's known to be a little bit of a diva, but you don't really know much about him or Bella Thorne, so it's like maybe someone just didn't like them. I don't know. Joe Rogan is very toxic. Kanye West, disgustingly toxic. Phil Cosby and R. Kelly, fucking disgusting. Um, Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee were extremely toxic, but I don't feel like they're horrible people. Had a lot of uh, addictions. Mel Gibson, I feel like struggles with addiction and mental health, and I hope peace for him. Same with Lindsay Lohan. I don't feel like they're bad people. I just think they had bad shit happen to them. Robert Downey Jr., you know, he's so much healed from when he was before, but I don't feel like you're all ever fully healed. I feel like he's got a lot of skeletons in there, and I wish him healing. And, of course, we got to talk about Nick Carter. Do I need to say it? Like, I don't like saying it, especially after, you know, watching the show and what these women must go through, um, just being associated to this man, because what I'm saying about Nick Carter, I don't have any ill will. I don't look badly on the women. Um, I look at Nick as 100% on his own sole mission to be a disgusting person and the fact of it's like a kid to you is like a pair of shoes like you take them out and you wear them on the day you want to wear them and you put them back in the closet when you don't want to wear them but those mothers you know, they're raising those kids. They're holding it down. I have mad respect for those mothers. I'm not talking shit. I'm not saying you're stupid. I'm saying Nick Carter 
I know he's the father of your kid, but he's being, look at the message he's sending. Are you going to wake up, and, are you going to grow up and tell your kids to have <laughs> mad fucking kids with mad women? No, don't be your father is what you're going to say. Like there's something wrong with him mentally to think that's okay. Like, I don't care what your arrangement, like, I don't care about the fucking, and it's cool that y'all can coexist, and I think the babies are fine. Like, I don't feel like they're going to have bad lives. There's single women that raise kids, and they don't even know their dads. But to actively, purposely father that, you are the one that fathers the children. You are the one that puts the baby in there. You are the one I'm coming for. You have a problem. And, you know, yes, you can afford it. Yes, you can do whatever you want. Why are you doing it, though? Because you can't be a father to all of those kids the way that they deserve. They deserve. Not saying they're going to be lacking without it because those mothers are going to hold it the fuck down. And I'm sad for those fucking mothers because they shouldn't fucking have to. There's something wrong with their scope of relationships for them to feel like that's what they deserve. And that's what makes me sad for those women. Because it's either like they don't want to, like the one girl I did see on there, she explained it herself. She doesn't let people in. She doesn't, monogamy isn't something that she knows how to do or had an example of her you know what I mean so she is comfortable with coming and going that fits for her and that's sad because she is somebody who is smart and deserves real love just like all the other women they just don't know I'm not saying they don't respect themselves because they do they're hard ass women to be able to hold it down like they do but you deserve so much fucking better than Nick Carter. I don't give a fuck if you think Nick Carter is the fucking king of your fucking castle. As a woman, as a goddess, he don't fucking deserve your ass. Period. Duh. <laughs> you can get anyone. Like, I don't give a fuck if he gives you money. I don't care if while he sees his kid, he's a good dad. Ain't enough. You deserve better. But I also agreed with what she said. It's none of your business. You don't have to accept it and word. But that's my video. <laughs> Again, I think the women and the kids are amazing. And they're going to, those kids are probably going to grow up and be famous, amazing kids. And Nick's going to have nothing to do with it. You're just the fucking sperm donor. That's what I'm trying to say. It will be all because of the mothers. And if you want to get mad at that, sorry. It was a compliment, believe it or not. <laughs> Let's see, is there anyone? Keanu Reeves, I feel like he's awesome, Earth Angel. Jenna Jameson um, was a dark witch of our time. Hugh Hefner, same thing. Matt Lauer, disgusting. Nancy Grace dark worker even though everybody thinks she's good she loved to serve the pot she didn't give people she ruined a lot of lives more than she helped by accu accusations um like the situation and angelina they're both dark people pretending to be good um fixer up or chip and joanna Gaines. love them i think they're twin flames and angels um the act mom, another person who's just like a Meghan Markle of this world. Eminem and Kim. <laughs> uh, I didn't mention Kim. You know, I don't want to bring that up because of cancel culture. And I just think that I'm not giving them fuel. But it was not a healthy relationship. And we'll leave it there. The Duggars, disgusting. John and Kate plus eight, disgusting. Tiger Woods. Disgusting, but reforming. <laughs> Serena Williams, I feel like she's a good person. Al Roker, love him. Hoda, love her. Um, Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic. 
totally evil people. Yuck to both. <laughs> um, Stephen King and John Grisham, love them. Katie Couric, love her. Jessie J, love her. J.K. Rowling, I think I said her already. Kristen Bell and Dax Shepard, love them too. I think they're great. Victoria Beckham and David Beckham. Um, I think back in the day they added to vanity and pop culture and the negative, but as a whole, they're very good people. I really liked David Beckham standing in line and not being one of those famous people that cut for the queen. I had respect for him. Victoria holds it down in fashion. I love all her stuff. I think they're good people. Um, Gordon Ramsay and Emeril Lagasse. I think Gordon is a dick. I'm not going to lie. I love Emeril. Paula Dean reformed. I think she's a good person. Um, just was, you know, a product of her environment. Rachel Ray, I love her. Gabby Douglas, that's the gymnast. I think she's fabulous. LeBron James, I really like him too. Um, Martha Stewart, reformed. <laughs> uh, Nancy Kerrigan, have to mention her. I mentioned Ta uh, Tanya Harding, love Nancy. Jason Derulo, Neo, Nelly, Snoop, uh, Dr. Dre. I love Dre's music, but there was a couple things back in the day about him being a beater too was ahead of my time so I don't really know like all the facts but I'm always like Ugh, I can't if you hit women Bruno Mars The Weeknd not saying he does now I'm just saying he did so I was like mm. <laughs> no I can't live that life don't like it um, Adam Levine good person bad fucking husband <laughs> Alec Baldwin <sighs> What shit luck you have, and I'm on the fence. Because he has a temper and a dark side. Jamie Foxx, love him. I think I said him before. Um, Kesha, Demi Lovato, love them. Pierce Morgan, I think he's a dick. Simon Cowell, the same. Howard Stern, I, thought, I know a lot of people love him, but he's been very toxic. Ted and Amy, love them. Elvis Duran, love him. Um, Bobby Brown, he's been through a lot of shit, but he's a dick. Oprah and Gal King, I just, Oprah's done a lot of stuff, but I don't really like her anymore since the Meghan Markle interview. Uh, Justin Bieber, I think he's a star seed. Mm, I already said him. <laughs> Kelly Clarkson, did I say her? Earth Angel. Jimmy Fallon, I think he's cool. Starseed. James Gordon, I'm on the fence. I think he gets a bad rap. I think overall he's a good person, but he can be a dick if he wants to, but can't we all? So, it's not really a diss. <laughs> Kevin Hart, another person who's not the best husband at least he's open and honest about his cheating though gotta give it up he doesn't sugarcoat it um i think that's it i think we covered everybody <laughs> an hour and so much for 30 minutes anyway i haven't really decided next week's um we'll see <laughs> I'll announce it in the posts, the community posts. Um, I know this was longer than I thought, but I went through a lot of people, a lot of pop culture. Um, again, these are all my opinion and my inst my instincts. You don't have to agree, and I never meant to hurt or offend anybody. Like, who am I? I'm nobody important, so don't let it bother you, okay? <laughs> anyway, love and light. Toodaloo, boo-boos, boy.